We've been looking at the melting part of emotional responses we can have when life gets challenging and how we all have our own unique way of dealing with things. If our emotions are running high, then sometimes our mind can fear that this can be too much for us to deal with. And in those moments, we can detach from what's happening. We know this happens in shock and times when we have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And this detachment from our emotions and ourselves is something that has been studied extensively. But with this type of research, I think it's really hard to fully navigate the uniqueness of our emotional responses. And this can make understanding this difficult to analyse. If you've ever been skiing, this is something you might have experienced or heard about. And I was a skier, this is something I always hated. And luckily, I've only had to experience it a few times. It's called a whiteout. The snow is falling so, just so much that you lose all concept of direction as the dense snow makes the landscape completely indistinguishable. It's a horrible feeling as you just don't know what's in front of you or even which way is downhill or uphill. It can make you feel quite sick and very disorientated. I think at times when we are in an emotional challenging situation, our mind opts for a type of whiteout situation. In PTSD, this is often at its maximum, and I think then those feelings of feeling disorientated and sick can come in. But we can then struggle to place them on an emotional level to the situation that we're in and find it difficult to probably respond in the ways that we would normally. This is often what we need in those times of trauma. But when we're dealing with things on a day-to-day -day basis, with even parts of this type of reaction, it can have quite a negative impact on how we respond to things. If our minds are moving into the whiteout zone, then when we think about the situation at hand that is troubling us, we can feel less emotionally connected to it. You might think, well, this is maybe not a bad thing when things are hard to cope with. And yes, you're not wrong there, but it can have many downsides. If you're not fully emotionally connected due to our melting pot of emotions being in a whiteout, then how do we deal correctly with the situation? if we're partly disconnected from ourselves. I believe that if we're in this part or full emotional whiteout, then we are disconnected from ourselves, just like a snow whiteout, then we can lose our bearings and find it hard to navigate and move around. If you think you white out in situations, then you might not respond appropriately at the moment. And it's only when the stress of the event starts to recede, do you think, oh, maybe that wasn't the best way to have dealt with the situation. Then maybe it's time to acknowledge that your melting pot of emotions is white, and that you need to work harder to look at the emotions that your mind has been pushing away from you. If you have this knowledge, then you can ask people around you to remind you of your white out emotional response or have a new protocol of how to deal with the emotional situation. This could be that you sit down and write down the situation and take the time to think about how this might make other people involved feel. Doing this simple exercise will help you bypass that automatic whiteout response and help you start to see where you are and give you a more grounded 
emotional response to what is challenging you. There is not often a clear right or wrong answer to things and emotions are very fluid and hard to hold in any solid form, a bit like water. It's hard to just contain that water unless you have a container. Without that, it's just going to run everywhere. This for our minds and even ourselves can be scary. And this is often where this white out way of dealing with things has been developed. Yes, it's more than likely that this is your inner habitual mind making this happen. But we don't have to move blindly along with what our mind says. We have free will and choice to do what we feel is right. But making any changes will take effort as we're pushing against those learned and developed habits from the unconscious. It's important moving forward that we don't use this as an excuse not to change, but we put in place things around us that help trigger us, to remind us to reconnect and look at this from other people's perspective. Looking at the situation from other people's eyes is a great way to help us reconnect to our feelings and help remove that white out from our inner mind and, and our emotional responses. If this is you, then I will imagine this has been around for a long time and people around you might find your ways of responding difficult to cope with and you might be getting yourself in trouble with people with this lack of consideration. Or you might find that you just would withdraw completely or distance yourself from things until this emotional situation is receding. And again, this might make people closest to you feel unsupported in times of challenge. Neither of these ways will make your life happy. And when you do reconnect to yourself, then you won't feel great about how you've dealt with things. Don't let this happen. Take control. Reconnect. See things from other people's perspective. Set reminders to help you. But also remember that you're not on your own. Get your family and friends to help you. They could just say to you when they see you backing away or detaching from an emotional situation, just the words white out. And this could be just enough to help you refocus back into the moment. Start today and feel how great feeling more grounded and emotionally connected life can be. Mm -hmm.